Hey ChatGPT, ask me a real estate question. Hey Matthias, what's the most common challenge you face when working with first-time home buyers? Uh, the most common challenge I face when working with first-time home buyers is to deal with expectations, meaning that uh, they got approved maybe to say a million dollars and they start looking at homes that are a million dollars. And you know, it depends where the market is at, but that's almost never a good idea because when you are dealing with multiple offers, you don't want to deal, if the market is very active, if things are moving, you don't want to look at your limit. So you got nowhere to go. You got to look a little bit below. So you got to deal with expectations. Now that's not always the case, but deal with expectations. Don't always look at the limit. Another thing that could be a little bit challenging is the fact that a lot of people do not know what they want. So you ask them, you know, what do you need? Well, they need three bedrooms. I need this, I need that. And then when they get out there, uh, they learn differently. So I think that is a very important thing to understand expectations and also the journey of discovery on discovering what you want, what you really need. That's definitely part of the challenge, but also extremely exciting because when you go out there and you look at properties, there are things that you never thought about. Maybe you thought you needed three bedrooms, but it turns out the two bedroom and a den is enough. Maybe you wanted a big yard, but then you're thinking, I don't want to take care of the yard. I wouldn't be surprised if after a couple of weeks, after you get to learn the market, what you wanted at the beginning completely changes. Hey ChatGPT, ask me another real estate question. Matthias, what strategies do you typically employ to help clients refine their preferences and expectations when searching for a home? Okay, so the primary strategy is relatively simple. You wanna cast a wide net to begin with. Because while we talked about the preference, that also applies to neighborhoods. LA is so varied and different. So some of the choices you make at the beginning when you're looking for a home, it may depends like, you know, I'm not willing to commute more than 30 minutes from work or not willing to commute more than this, or I want to be near a park. I want to be near my kids' school. This is a big deal in Los Angeles, actually. You, certain parents, including myself, you want to be in a specific school district maybe. And, you know, private school can be really expensive. Some people have no problem paying for it, but there are some great public schools so you wanna be there or you're saying like, you know, we're gonna go, my kids are gonna to go to private high school. So, but in, for public, for elementary school, I want them to be in this particular district. So that is something that comes with the decision. So that is something that when you do the journey of discovery, you get to learn and you get to be ready for the changes you have to adapt. That's one of the important strategies to use. Hey, ChatGPT. Why don't you ask me another real estate question? Sure, Matthias. When it comes to negotiating offers on behalf of your clients, what tactics do you find most effective in securing favorable terms for them? Okay, so you're asking me a lot of buyer representation questions, which are good. Uh, when negotiating offers, I've talked about this before, but I'm gonna say it again. Don't just send an offer. Just call the agent and let them know that you're sending an offer. As the buyer's agent, you wanna call them and campaign for your buyer and say, look, we're about to submit an offer. My buyer's well qualified. My buyer's all cash. My buyer this, my buyer that. And put them in touch with the lender directly. So the lender, if there is a loan involved, can reach out and say, the client is very well qualified. We underwritten the loan. Everything is great. Everything is good to go. Nobody likes to go into escrow and cancel. A seller wants a smooth transaction. They don't want stress. So you minimize that by opening up a line of communication. I do that all the time. When I'm on the listing side and agents call me, I appreciate that. When they sell me, hey, let me tell you a little bit about, about my buyer or let me, I'm about to submit an offer. Like, and this is, you know, where we're kind of thinking. And you know what? Sometimes some agents, they're not gonna even care, but it doesn't matter. And one of the lines that I always use, I always say, we are easy to work with. And there's a lot of truth to that. Because even no matter, you know, even if you negotiate, you can always keep a smile on your face. Even if there are challenges and things you have to overcome, you can always do it with kindness and you always do it, can do it with the knowledge and the understanding that this is not an adversarial process. This is, everybody wants the same thing. The seller wants to sell, the buyer wants to buy, and the job of the agents is to bring them together so that everybody feels like they did 
great. They had a good deal. Everything went well. Okay, chat GPT. Why don't you ask me another real estate question? Matthias, in your experience, what are some key factors that contribute to a successful open house event? Open houses. Okay, that's a great question. I love open houses. In 2019, I did 54 open houses. That's more than there are weeks in the year. I love hosting open houses. There is an old Chinese proverb. I heard this in the book, um, How to Win Friends and Influence People, that says a, a man who doesn't have a smile on his face has no right opening his shop. It's referring to people when you are in the service industry, in the commerce industry, that could not be truer for open houses. It could not be truer for open houses. Have a smile, be kind. I just did an open house this last week. I had maybe like 60 people stop by, answer their question, ask them questions, make them feel comfortable when they come in. I have gone to open houses undercover as a, you know, not people didn't know that I was an agent or anything. And the, and the agent is sitting there working on their laptop and barely paying attention to the people. No, do not do that. It doesn't matter, you know. People say you're not there to sell the house and there may be truth to that, you know. Like the house maybe, you know, ultimately, you know, doesn't matter, you know, if you smile, if you don't smile, somebody that wants the house will buy. But you are there to represent the seller and also you are there to uh, facilitate so that people during their real estate journey, like anybody could be at the beginning or the end of their real estate journey or wherever they are, be open, answer questions, engage into communication. And you know, there's plenty of scripts out there of how you could do, what you can answer, what you could do, what you can say. You know what, ultimately that's, those are okay, but ultimately you develop your own dialogue. You know, one of the things that I like to say is when somebody walks through the door, I say, welcome. Welcome, make yourself at home. I have sign-up sheets in the kitchen. Let me know if you have any questions. I, and you know, you can say things like, what brought you here today? Like all those things, like there's so many things. So that's one thing. Number two, always have a little area where people can sign in, people can get information. I love doing that. That's one of the things that for me, it's been key. Sometimes you can have, a, you know, like a bowl of candy if you want. Now, after the pandemic, I haven't been doing that so much. I just put hand sanitizer there because, you know, there's people at open houses. There are still people today in 2024 showing up with a mask and everything. So I want to be respectful. I don't necessarily want to do things, but that, that make people uncomfortable. But I turn all the lights on in the house. Make that, even if the house is a fixer, just make it look nice. Open up all the blinds, bring in as much light as you can. Put out signs in front of the house. I put flags in front of the house. You know what? Because I want all the neighbors to feel like they're welcome. And, and I love it how neighbors are always hesitant. Like they walk in and they're like, uh, okay, is it okay? I'm just a nosy neighbor. Of course it's okay. I love to meet neighbors and I tell you why, because they tell me so much. I'm not a neighborhood realtor. I sell all over LA County. I cannot possibly know everything there is to know about every neighborhood in LA. It's huge. But by talking to the neighbors, I learned so much. People tell me like, without even asking, they say, oh, did you try that uh, restaurant around the corner? It's really good. Oh, and by the way, the school over here, she, that's a great school. And you see the park, la, la. oh, I used to, I've known, the, you know, I've lived in this neighborhood for 65 years, la, la, whatever the stories are, they're great, I love them, and they help me. Because then somebody else comes and they say, do you know anything about the neighborhood? I was like, other than all the research that I've done before, I can also say things from boots on the ground, from people that have lived. Like, I'll give you an example. I saw the house in Santa Monica Canyon, and somebody came over and said, oh my God, you know, in, on the 4th of July, they're doing a baseball game in the middle of the street. There's a parade, there's this and that. All this information that you cannot find online. Like this is stuff that the neighbors will tell you. And when people came over, I was like, oh, did you guys know that, you know, on 4th of July here, they have like this block party and they organize this. That is so important. So these are all the elements that are important for me. There's many more. This will definitely make a successful open house. Thank you for watching. That concludes part one of our video. But before I let you go, Hey ChatGPT, do you have any parting words for our audience? Thanks for watching everyone. Remember, whether you're buying, selling, or just exploring the world of real estate, always stay informed and make decisions that align with your goals. Until next time, take care and keep exploring. That was great. I'll see you in the next video.